I, I'll tell you a story, since some of you don't know it, uh, about uh, how I got to, came out here about 2000 and, was it one? 2003. And it was, uh, I was retired and I lived in Minnesota and I was at home and it was December 15th, I'll never forget it, and there was a blizzard that you can believe going on outside the window. And I was sitting there, I had retired to write, I, I retired a little early to write. And this friend of mine who I had taught with had come out to Cal State Channel Islands, to, she was one of the founding group and so she had worked for a year and it was the first year and she called me then and said I really need somebody to start to teach this class January 5th starting January 5th could you just come out teach this class I said I'll be there <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even tell my husband sitting back there he, he 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 was at work he hadn't even I didn't even tell him I was going till he came back <laughs> and I said guess what I'm gonna do <laughs> so but so we we both, we drove out, we packed up the car and drove out, and I found um, some place to stay in Ventura, which I liked a lot. And then he used to come out a lot, and then, and then after he retired, they asked, asked him at Channel Islands, they asked him to come and work too, so we're still here, and now we'll be here for, you know, here and Minnesota, we go back and forth. And that's the thing I wanted to talk about for a minute, about community, tied in with both of that. One is, when I came here, I didn't know anybody, and no poets, no writers, really. And I went to the Thursday Night Poetry. At that time, it was over on the boardwalk at the Arts Art, Artists Union. And I read, and uh, that's all it took. People were so welcoming. My gosh, it was just wonder, a wonderful, so when you talk about community, that's a wonderful way to come into community when you don't know anybody and meet all these people who have the same passion, you know, that you do. So I'll always, I feel so appreciative of that. And I was so lucky it was there because if it wasn't there, you know, I, I still wouldn't know. I now I know so many poets in California, not just in Ventura County, but you know, all over the place. And um, so that's one thing I wanted to say. The second thing is that um, when I became Poet Laureate, well, I just saw an ad um, from a county library in Minnesota, um, near where we lived in, it was Anoka County, it's called, and they were looking for a Poet Laureate. And so, and so I was reading the ad and in, in the library was going to sponsor the county poet laureate. But it was like, oh my gosh, there was this whole list of things they wanted the poet laureate to do. And that, but no, that it would be like a full time job. I mean, you'd go in, nobody could do it. I mean, if you were retired, you'd be t too old. <laughs> and if you were working, you couldn't possibly do all that by yourself. And, I, and the thing is, with the poet laureate, when it started in uh, for Ventura County, there was this whole group of people who were totally dedicated to working with poetry and making it grow. And that's a really, especially in such a big county, I mean, that's so important. And um, so that was a wonderful thing. And, and so it's not, it's the whole community but the whole community is connected through, uh, you know, the people who are passionate about poetry. And so um, there are all these volunteers, people who do stuff, you know, oh, it's all for nothing. You know, don't, I mean, they don't get paid with money, <laughs> but, but they get paid because they love to do it. It's doing what they love to do. So, um, and uh, so those are the two things I wanted to talk about. Um, and then also, then from that you can go out to all the other, the groups that you can touch. And um, I think I've touched through the two groups that nobody's mentioned. I've really touched the seniors when I was Poet Laureate. And I still do, I still. And Ellen does too. She is <laughs> over here. She teaches um, classes for seniors too. 
And, and then you the kids, elementary age kids, because it, I, I teach the kids, the people that are getting their teaching licenses to teach elementary age kids at Channel Islands. And so through them and sending them out, I'm teaching, teach them how to teach writing. So sending them out to the classrooms. And so I kind of, you know, feel like I'm able to touch a lot of young people, you know, through that. So um, with that, I'm just going to read a couple things. I'm going to, um, that's go over the years. And I'm going to start with reading in Ars Poetica, too. That's about how I came to poetry. And like uh, Enid read her wonderful, two wonderful Ars Poeticas. And this one is I owe to Jackson Wheeler, who uh, Phil talked about at the beginning, because he is this very famous Ars Poetica that was so beautiful and that inspired this one. So this is it. Ars Poetica. Because my mother's mother carried her Irish language across the stormy Atlantic to St. Paul. Because my great-grandfather, who lived to be a hundred, sang in Irish as he bounced us on his bony leg. Because on the front porch of my grandmother's house, the cousins, all named Mary, learned a hundred names for green from rebel songs. Because I lived 60 years before I learned my mother's father died drunk under the hooves of a car of a horse he was driving. Because my cousin, Sheriff O'Connell, who took bribes from Chicago gangsters, gave money to my widowed grandmother. Because when I read him about him in St. Paul histories, I thought he's a saint, not a sinner. Because my father's tiny mother came from Galway with a family too full of priests and nuns. Drew. Because she loved to talk in the way of Irish women over tea and toast at small tables. Because I grew up in the quotidian music of women's murmuring close to the ground where the world begins. Because men were either silent or overbearing, I lived my girl's life with Anne of Green Gables and Little Women. The bus plying the old Fort Road to school became my bridge at San Luis Rey. Because art and music were in the church, I thought beauty belonged to God. Because roots of my young astonishment cling to my inner life like the pine cone, growing even after fire, living scales. Because in the convent we were told to be silent, I picked up a pen. Because of my heart's homelessness. Because a poem waits for me to see it the way Monet's last painting, his exact pink and red primroses, waited for his uncurtained vision. Because love will not let go. Because words unwrite as they are written, unspeak as they are spoken. Because my granddaughters listen to my tales of trolls and beanstalks, their eyes where words, their eyes pools where words sink and grow the way I once listened to the old ones. I do not want to die without writing my watery, unwritten universe. Um, so I came to poetry because of that, just loving, loving language and hearing it. And um, had a wonderful nun in, for English in high school who played T.S. Eliot records for us. And just and hearing the language is what made me start writing. Just almost, I'd lift that classroom and go write because I, well, actually I'd go to typing class because my mother made me take typing and because she wanted me to be a secretary. <laughs> and so, and so while I'd be typing, I'd be typing poems instead of, instead of practicing, you know, like I was supposed to be doing. So, um, and then I sort of never stopped. So I want to write, read this poem that is about the the writers who inspired me through the years. It's called By Way of Words. It takes place on an airplane flying from Minneapolis to LA. 
by way of words. Locked within the radiant metal skin of a DC-10 in a flight from one life to another, I stare out a scratched porthole to my Midwest, twilight coming on. Below, through miles of cloudless air, a freeway clover leaf glitters, a brooch, sweet planted of my youth, my childhood, where's home? From the memory room of my brain, Seamus Haney's voice lilts, you are neither here nor there, a hurry through, which known in strange things pass. I am a vessel of music assigned to seat 11A, moving mid to west across the continent in a vacant space once called God's. To the plane's blinking wing, I give Yeats' stolen child, all of it. Bishop's moose, the start of it. Nimble music of Hopkins' wreck, part of it. Thou knowest the walls alter in hour and night, the swoon of a heart that the sweep and the hurl of thee trod. The flight attendant comes by for trash, and Elliot intones in my head, <laughs> for good or ill, <laughs> because these wings are no longer wings to fly, but merely vans to beat the air. The captain's voice announces my, our descent. I turn back to my fertile window. Teach us to care and not to care. First the desert of small LA house tracks, then the light studded spines of buildings slowly rise into view. I think Emily here, her certain slant, waiting traffic stalled at salt rimmed lights tiny boats and rising lace-fingered sea swells. With Neruda I want to be and be nothing but light in the dark. Scarlet sunset set stripes the seaside hills, the flag of a country made of smog and beauty. So, I wanted to read a library poem because in terms of community, I think libraries are, are sort of a, a, a big center of the web. And um, it seems to be more and more that the libraries, and, and partly because the poets are going out to, to, you know, the librarians and trying to create a community there. And I think it's, um, you know, it's great. So I'm going to read a poem that, uh, how about how library saved my life when I was young. Um, it's set in St. Paul, that's where I grew up. <clears throat> the heart in its cage of bone. A winter wind blasts from the Mississippi, past caves and oil tanks, over train tracks, then down West 7th, where it batters the girl who walks with ice-crusted scarf bruising her mouth. Beneath a uniform skirt, leggings her mother makes her wear. These she removes and carefully hides in the bushes behind the bowling alley. She passes the bar, then Nedved's florist. Ahead, the Schmitz Brewery sign flashes a staccato that stays in her striding bones, always cold, wrapped in layers, hiding bones. Her mind churns with voices. Her mother warns, stay away from the river. It's dangerous for girls. Get in the car and help me find Highland Park, the man says. Voices of nuns push her feet as she runs from him. Stay pure, stay pure, runs with guilt in her frightened Irish bones. She runs through the stacks of the library, 
From the tall clerestory window where the sun is always going down, she reads the ice-encased river snaking southward. The dwindling light, spare, unforgiving, is her own. Frozen there, the chinks in her heart stuffed with feathers, she imagines a fra angelico lazuli, feels eternity in her bones. Her thin shoulders hunch where once were, and maybe someday will be, wings. Um, and I'm just going to end with a poem about listening to the little, I decided this while I was sitting there and listening to the little child when, when Eden was reading. It's called Mother, Ta Mother Tongue. And again, it, it's, so it's about children learning language. And it's dedicated to my granddaughter, Bridget. Bridget, who is, will be two next month and who started talking very early and, has, and never stops. <laughs> Mother Tongue for Bridget. All you know these early days is calling, mother, father, sister. Sometimes a bird gurgle of bliss, a scrap of music, enough to make cups of ears. Sounds chained in bracelets, glistening objects bright and dark, gifts for your mouth, that temple of new sounds, your cries, your moving tongue's wild script. Your wide eyes search in a greenscape for trees, bushes, hedges, boundaries blurred between earth and sky, day and night. Ahead of you, child, are names of things and things not yet named. Ahead of you, mallards and ducklings, hawks and their chicks. Inside, you live the names for every bird and all the tender words we give you so you can make your way through this glittering world. Thank, thank you, and thanks all, all you poets. Uh, you know, the big part of community is just hearing, hearing different voices, and I just loved hearing the different voices today and, and the, the stories that people bring to their lives.